When I say the greatest trilogy of all time, what comes to mind? Star Wars? Lord of the Rings? Maybe even Back to the Future? Well, no matter what you said, you're wrong. Unless you said the Diary of a Wimpy Kid trilogy. Wait, 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 aren't there four movies? In a perfect world, no. Based off the highly successful books of the same name, the Diary of a Wimpy Kid films are fantastic displays of cinema and deserve to be held in the highest regard until the end of time. The film's focus around our main protagonist, Greg Heffley, a young boy who thinks incredibly highly of himself, to the point where the only reason he documents these stories in his diary, aka uh, uh, the only reason the entire series exists, is because he assumes that when he's older he'll be too rich and famous to answer anybody's questions. Along with Greg, we've got the rest of his family, his overprotective mum, dorky dad, his annoying younger brother Manny, and his evil older brother Roderick. All of these characters are portrayed amazingly through the perfect casting. They look and feel like they could actually be a real family. All the actors do an excellent job of bringing the simple stick figures from the books to life, especially Roderick and his dad Frank. Even the kid actors, who aren't usually that great, do a surprisingly good job, and I couldn't see anyone doing a better job with these characters. Upon release, these movies were met with critical acclaim and smashed box office records, unsurprisingly of course. But these films are now over six years old. Do they still hold up? Yes, and I will explain why. So let's go back to 2010. But first, I want to go over my experience with the series. I saw the first movie in cinemas whenever I was 8 years old, and was instantly hooked, where everyone around my age was. And since then I kept up with the films each year, eagerly anticipating the next release. But a couple years later my granny gave me a book she got for free with a newspaper, and as I was reading it I realised something. THESE GUYS RIPPED OFF THAT MOVIE! Ahem, <laughs> not, not my proudest moment, but anyway, carrying on. Before I get into detail about these films, I have to point out the breathtaking traditional hand-drawn animation that rivals even the best of Disney. They cleverly open up every film with a scene featuring this animation, so that you know Fox brought their A game. Seventh grader. Sounds a lot better than sixth grader. But enough of that, let's start with the first film. The plot is that Greg starts middle school, and desperately wants to be popular, and for the whole movie we watch him concoct scheme after scheme to try accomplish this. To match with the books, it feels like a bunch of random skits strung together with an incredibly simple story, and that's perfectly fine for a movie of this nature. It starts by establishing Greg's goal, and the rest of the runtime is dedicated to showing his various attempts to get there. Helping him achieve this goal is his best friend Riley Jefferson, this dorky overweight kid who Greg sees as being lost without him, and that his friendship is doing him a favour. The problem with Riley is that he's not enough like me. I can't ditch him, because he'd be lost without me. But over the course of the film we realise that it's Greg who is lost without Riley. As for the brief part of the movie where they break up, we see Greg being stuck all by himself in a depressed state, while Riley goes off and happily makes new friends, and that's honestly the best thing about it. Greg is so fucking full of himself, on the first day of school he makes a popularity chart and puts himself at 19 out of 200. He breaks his best friend's arm and then brags about it to others. Hey, I'm the one who broke his hand. Then you're a jerk. And he devolves the school play into a fight just because he sees that his brother is filming. Newsflash, Gregory, there's gonna be hundreds of people filming. You'd think that all this would make Greg an extremely unlikable character. And you're right. But that's why it's so satisfying to watch when his desperate attempts to be popular only send him further and further down the popularity chart. We watch as he does awful thing after awful thing. <laughs> and when Riley finally calls him out on his bullshit, it's so cathartic. You know what, Greg? You're not a good friend. I you only you care about yourself. And it's genuinely nice to see Greg change by giving up any chance he has of being popular just for his friend, as he realises that school social life ultimately means nothing in the end. This movie can be really funny at times, with the comedy being built upon the character interactions. You know, they probably could have taken the easy way out and filled the movie with pointless fart jokes but they would never do something like that. The best interactions by far are with Greg and Riley and Greg and Roderick. Seeing Greg make up countless excuses for his shitty actions towards his friend can be hilarious, and Roderick is really funny in his own right. How do you feel about having owned this type of magazine? Ashamed. And it only makes sense for their relationship to be explored further in the next film, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Roderick Rules. In conclusion, Wimpy Kid 1 is a masterful work of art that brilliantly sets up the dynamic within the Heffley family, Greg's relationship with Riley, and how much of a shitty person our main character is. 
Released one year later, Roderick Rose was met with an even higher amount of praise than the first one. Hard to believe, I know, but it's objectively the best one of the trilogy. This one is about Roderick and Greg being forced to spend time with each other by their mum, Susan, as she wants them to start being more brotherly with each other, rather than enemies. And we see the many scenarios they face along this journey, until they eventually end the film as friends. After Greg had the brilliant character arc of learning not to be such a cunt in the last film, the writers made a bold move in making him be a cunt again. And this was geniusly done so that we, the audience, can have more hilarious scenes of Greg trying to get himself out of situations he's put himself in. This movie definitely raises up the cringe factor. In a good way, of course. We see Greg be put in these painful to watch situations, but we can't help but gaze in awe as he tries his hardest to get out of them. I'm in the lady. And since most of the time he's put in these situations because of Roderick, it builds up the main arc of the film, being that the two brothers start to build up a bond, in a way that doesn't come off as contrived or forced, but genuine. When we see Roderick find out that Greg told her mother about the party he threw, you fucking feel that shit. We had a really good time and... You know, you're my brother. She'll never be my friend. <sighs> God, this scene must have been awkward to film. Bunch of grown adults filming this little kid running around in his pants. Jeez. They've also added in a new character from the books, Holly Hills, who's Greg's love interest, and another brilliant plot device for Roderick and Greg to talk about. But this plotline cleverly goes nowhere, as it is expanded upon and given more focus in the next film. Clear example of a satisfying setup and payoff. Now, if you're still over there thinking to yourself, uh, but Mark, we all know that while yes, Diary of Wimpy Kid, Roderick Rules is a masterpiece and should be regarded as such with its wonderful characters, immense wit, rewatchability for hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, I'm just not sure if it matches the level of the original Diary of a Wimpy Kid or even Diary of Wimpy Kid Dog Days. Well, just in case you needed any more convincing, I've got a trump card that when shown to you, you cannot possibly deny that Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Roderick Rules is the best of the trilogy. In this film, there is a scene that parodies Numa Numa. So yeah, keep your fucking mouth shut. Now, I may have said that Roderick Rules was the best, but that's not to undermine the sheer brilliance of the third and final film, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Dog Days. At this point, you can really tell that Greg is going through puberty. He's taller, more muscular, and his voice is a lot deeper. I can't believe it's so crowded here. School isn't even on yet. It's nice, it's like as a kid, I was growing up alongside Greg Heffley. Now the first one was about Greg and Riley's relationship, and the second one was about Greg and Roderick's relationship. So this film is focused on the relationship between Greg and his father Frank. In the previous two films, the parents didn't really get much focus, so it's nice to see it built upon in this one. With the two at the start not having anything in common, to at the end, not having anything in common, but realising that that's okay. The main plot is that Frank is thinking about sending Greg off to prep school because Greg played video games for a little too long one day. And so Greg has to do all in his power to convince his dad not to send him, even pretending that he got a job at a country club. He goes there as Riley's guest, but when he won't take him anymore because he's such an asshole, My, my parents don't want me to invite you anymore. Greg sneaks in anyway, and continues to purchase over $200 worth of his movies and bill it to Riley's dad. Greg is definitely at his most malicious in this one, especially to Riley's family. Like I mentioned, he bought over $200 worth of beverages and billed it to Riley's dad, but he also calls the fucking police on them at one point. All because, get this, they talked about why they loved each other, licked the same ice cream, and the final straw is that Riley snores a little too loudly. Now he acts like calling the police was an accident, but we all know what this immoral prick was thinking. This one really shows Greg as being the most evil and vile character in all of fiction. Some might call him a sociopath, but I don't think I'm legally allowed to say. Over the course of the film, Greg connects more with his dad, makes up with Riley for like, the 50th time, and finally gets to spend time with Holly. And it ends with Roderick's band giving an awe-inspiring performance, Frank deciding not to send his son away, and Greg finally getting the girl, putting a nice little bow on the series. With the success of all these films, it led to plenty of knockoffs, like Judy Moody and the Not Bummer Summer. But everybody knew you couldn't top the original. The Diary of Wimpy Kid movies are not only great adaptations, but fantastic movies in their own right. It's sad that we never ended up getting that Cabin Fever film, but they definitely ended on a high note, with what turned out to be the greatest trilogy in film history. Again, isn't there a fourth one? No. 
I don't know what you were talking about. Yeah, I'm reading right here. It's something like Diary of Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul. Don't you ever say that fucking name ever again.